in a story that should be surprising to no one. When they tried bringing in these gender ideology books into schools in Dearborn, Michigan, families came and protested and shut down the school board meeting. Why? Dearborn, Michigan is very largely Muslim. Muslims are religious conservatives. And even the ones that are more moderate, you're more likely to see a bunch of parents being like, hey, I don't want books with sexual depictions being shown to my children. And now you get this story from the Detroit Free Press. Protesters shut down Dearborn School Board meeting over LGBTQ books. What they should say in the headline is Islamic or Muslim protesters. These are people who have religious convictions. They report hundreds of protesters packed Dearborn Public School Board meeting Monday night and shut it down with cries of anger over certain LGBTQ books they said are too sexually explicit for children. And they're right. The books are. A heavy police presence failed to prevent the meeting from descending into chaos as demonstrators took it over and then various factions within within them jostled for control, shouting at each other. Protesters often ignored the requests of police officers to stop interrupting board members. It was unclear who was in control of the meeting at times. Most of the crowd appeared to be in opposition to the books, but there were also a number of people with the American Federation of Teachers Union who showed up to support inclusion of LGBTQ people and others. Nobody was uh, protesting the people. They were protesting books with sexually explicit imagery. But surprise, surprise, the American Federation of Teachers Union shows up to, I don't know, promote giving sexually explicit material to children. I have to question what kind of person would do that. How weird. Not until Dearborn Police Chief Isa Shahin arrived later did the protesters stop their agitation. Shahin pleaded with the crowd to relax and not embarrass Dearborn. Quote, please calm down. Let's have respect for each other, Shahin told the crowd at about 9, 10 p.m. We can have a spirited debate, but we can't conduct ourselves this way, guys. We just can't. We're better than this. Dearborn is better than this. This community is better than this. We're brothers and sisters, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion. Sean said the board has suspended the meeting and will reschedule it for Thursday evening at Fordson High School in order to accommodate a larger crowd. Vote them out. The crowd repeatedly chanted during the raucous meeting inside an administrative center where the board holds its public meetings. The room was packed tightly with many using an overflow room and others standing in the back and on the sides. Several held up signs with anti-gay rhetoric in English and Arabic. I wonder why they haven't stated in the headline that this was predominantly Muslims protesting this. Arabic, you say, making religious references to assert that LGBTQ educational materials and books should not be available in Dearborn Public Schools, the third largest school district in Michigan. Some of the placards held up read, keep your porno books to yourself, homosexuality, big sin, and if democracy matters, we're the majority. They're allowed to have those opinions. Don't be surprised when they bring them to the school board meetings because you're trying to show their children sexually explicit materials, you weirdos. And and I say weirdos to the people who are trying to show porn to kids. That's who the weirdos are. Last month on September 25th, another protest with similar themes was held outside Henry Ford Centennial Library in Dearborn. And a pro book rally was held earlier at at the library on the same day. So far, Dearborn Schools has removed six books for review, a majority of them with LGBTQ themes and restricted some of its online access, announcing a plan to give parents more control over what books their children can check out. Cue the leftist lies of they're banning books. Okay, if a bunch of people got together and said, we are going to burn these books, I would first ask, well, what books are they? If it turned out the books were political ideology of any kind, I'd say, hey, that's that's bad. I don't agree with that. If it turned out the books were sexually explicit books, I would say I also don't agree with that. Don't burn those. You know, people are entitled to read those kinds of books. Now, if the books are sexually explicit with adult themes marketed towards children, then I'd be like, yeah, okay, those can go. I have a limit. I have a line. 
It's not a question of the ideas. It's a question of appropriateness for kids. It's a question of having standards and morals. I want everyone to read political ideology. I don't want those books banned. I want people to be able to write and and publish and share books about adult themes and of a sexual nature with images, graphic ones if they want. And that's fine. But I have a question about when they're being marketed towards kids. When you have a book for kids and it's like, this book's for children and here's what it is. Then I'm like, yeah, okay, that book shouldn't be available to children. Now, to to, to clarify, I don't think any book should be burned, even in that capacity, to be completely honest. I just think kids shouldn't be allowed to have access to it. You want to ask questions about the Bible? I think when it comes to certain issues of the Bible, Leviticus 2320, the famous one, parents should be with their kids when it comes to reading certain passages in the Bible. There's a lot of adult themes and kids need guidance. I agree with that as well. If parents want to bring sex ed to their kids and get a book to do it, I have no problem with that. What I'm talking about is some of these books are outright let's just say a a, a fetishist, adult graphic, pedophile material, trying to show kids and groom them. That's just, that stuff's too far. You want to get a book called like The Birds and the Bees that explains basic anatomy and and sexual reproduction and all that stuff? Well, sure, I don't care about that. You want to get a book that depicts two people engaging in adult activities and talking about it in graphic detail. And then you and then and then Amazon even says kids should not be reading this and you try to give it to kids. Now we got a problem again. I don't think the book should literally be burned, but it's not so much a book banning as it is a porn banning. That's the weirdest thing to me. They want to equate this like the Nazis or whatever. And it's like, dude, the issue is graphic obscenities, marketing towards kids, grooming them. Now, of course, I'll be the first to outright uh, say it's an issue of morality. The left has no moral qualms with that. To me, that's shocking. Some people take issue with violence being given to kids. They have moral issues there. And they say, why would we allow kids to see, you know, read books about violence? Yeah, it really is just personal moral lines, personal values. Where are you on the on the spectrum of morals? The left seemingly has none in this capacity. They don't care about this. It's a moral foundation issue. Conservatives believe in purity and sanctity. We believe, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this. Libertarian, conservative, moderate, etc. All of those who are opposed to what they're doing in these schools. I think that raising children right can be done. And I believe raising children wrong can be done. So when they come out and they say, kids know what they want, can do whatever they want, don't need parental guidance. No, that's not true. Parents need to help teach their kids and instill their values in them. They want to say, Monday's meeting was largely calm for about an hour but then spiraled out of control as some became upset with board members who spoke about time limits for public commenters and the need to show civility and respect. At one point, a speaker said Dearborn's fire marshal had determined it was unsafe to continue, which further upset some in the crowd. Mike Hatcham, one of the protesters and others, questioned why the determination was only made just before the public comment section was to begin. Interesting, right? Take a look at this. Meeting of Dearborn schools has ended into chaos. Mobs opposed to some LGBTQ books took over the meeting. The chair of the board, Roxanne McDonald, tried to keep the peace, saying she didn't want to hear people make baseless and slanderous remarks. Let's all be civil and respectful. Police officers told people who yelled to keep quiet. Yada, yada. You get it. You get it. Overwhelmingly, this was a bunch of Muslims protesting. And I respect their right to protest because I think there's a strong overlap there with Traditional liberals, conservatives, and Muslims. I would probably fall into the traditional liberal camp. Traditional liberals were largely Christian, mind you. I'm not a Christian. I do believe in God. I don't know why there's a meme where, where or like people are like, Tim's an atheist. No, I'm not. I've, I've not been an atheist since I was like 18. I tell the story all the time. And I was barely an atheist. I mean, I don't really know what it means to not be an atheist before that. We don't really know what you're talking about or, or, or what these ideas even mean. But I grew up Catholic for a few years, went to public school, turned 18 and said, huh, maybe I was wrong about that. And my, for me, it was mainly about reading science, physics, astrophysics, quantum physics, reading all these books. And then I was like, wow. And then I'm like, there's a God. But the problem, I suppose, for a lot of people on the left is that they think God is like a guy with a beard, you know, folding his arms, going, you know, blinking and making things happen. That's not what I think. Anyway, I digress. I believe that traditional liberals have, I would argue, progressive views on this stuff. This, whatever this is, 
showing kids graphic depictions. I don't know what that is. That's that, 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 that's not progressive. It's it's degenerate. OK, progressive is very simple. It's like, hey, I got an idea. Let's talk about protecting the civil rights of individuals. Live and let live. And that includes the LGBT community. OK, I'm totally OK with that. That's fine. Yeah, I got no issue. What was that? You want sexual depictions presented towards children? OK, well, that's an issue of sex ed for parents. What was that? You're telling the children not to talk to their parents. OK, now you've crossed the line. And that's what we, we all agree on. I don't know who these degenerates are who are like, don't tell your parents that we're showing you these pictures. No, the parents are supposed to be the ones in control of what their kids are learning. Yeah. They say Dearborn is about 47 percent Arab American, uh, Arab American, most of them Muslim, Muslim. And Dearborn Heights is about one third Arab. So there you go. It's very obvious. It's religious people saying no. OK, let's talk about where we're headed. Take a look at this. Planned Parenthood is under fire for cartoon ad that encourages children to get on puberty blockers if they think they're transgender and tells them the drugs work like a stop sign. That's a lie. They say Planned Parenthood is receiving backlash for a cartoon ad that teaches teenagers different ways of delaying puberty, some of which which they claim work like a stop sign. One of those ways is through the use of puberty blockers, which can halt voice deepening facial hair growth and menstrual cycles. The organization posted the video to its YouTube account in January, but it has recently resurfaced on the I inside the classroom Twitter account. In the video, cartoon figures tell teenagers that puberty looks different for everyone, particularly if they're trans, intersex or non-binary. And what they're experiencing during puberty may be confusing as it as it may not line up with their gender identity. So here's an image of, I guess, like a taller person and a short obese person. And they're saying you may find that your puberty experiences don't line up with your gender identity. They say puberty blocker, uh, quote, puberty blocker ad put up by Planned Parenthood, which tells children that they are that they can get puberty blockers to put puberty on hold. EITC tweeted earlier this month. Full stop. Why is Planned Parenthood giving out puberty blockers? What does Planned Parenthood have to do with being trans? Uh, serious question. I can understand that they give out birth control. I can understand if they give abor- uh, per- perform abortions. Planned Parenthood, that's what they do. But um, why give cross-sex hormones or puberty blockers to children or to adolescents? A serious question. What does that have to do with parenthood? Nothing. Then what is Planned Parenthood? An anti-fertility center? I mean, this is going to sterilize these kids. They say puberty blockers are safe and can give you more time to figure out what feels right for you, your body and your gender identity. You don't have to have all the answers right now. Your gender identity is real. You should be the one to decide what changes you want to make to your body. The ad continues. You know, we've had a lot of people on Timcast IRL say that they think the transgender movement is just the precursor to transhumanism. I don't know if I agree 100 percent, but I do think whether intentional or not, what we are seeing here with transgender, transracial, trans species and all this trans stuff is the advent of transhumanism. But it's not just humans becoming cyborgs or machines. It's humans becoming nothing. You get on puberty blockers. You remain a child for a long time, like forever. They, uh, what is it? They say most um, males who go on puberty blockers for an extended period will have a micro penis for the rest of their lives because the tissues will not develop. And that results in complications later in life. Yeah. It will basically make males or females regardless androgynous. And then when they restart hormones, it will not give them the full experience of whatever it is they're getting. So to put it simply, puberty blockers are probably bad for everybody across the board, be it a a transgender or otherwise. If there is like a 13 year old and the doctor says you're trans, well, then puberty blockers are a bad thing. Because if they if, if they want to go full, you know, one direction or the other, then they need all the time in the world during development to be on those hormones. So I just say across the board, puberty blockers are bad and should be criticized even by trans people. But I digress. I don't think kids should be getting transgender uh, interventions, medical or surgical. The video tells teenagers that if they are trans, intersex or non-binary, they're not the only ones feeling confused and that puberty is different for everyone. Intersex, I understand. That's a really interesting issue. Now, most people are not intersex, but in the in, in that instance, I think there's a real question about puberty blockers. Absolutely. 
if there is somebody who is born intersex and uh, um, ambiguous and, and the doctors are like, we don't, you know, it could go either way, then that's an instance where someone's going to have to make a decision for real. I've seen, I, I've read a bunch of stories. There was, I think Crowder had a, had a conversation with someone who was intersex, but presented overtly female. And it's, well, well there you go. If someone is intersex, but they feel more one way or the other, then maybe it is important to make sure that they develop the way that they feel. As for a child who's completely biologically male, there is, there is no question. And the issue with intersex is that these people aren't going to have a, a male or female experience. They're going to have to the best of our medical abilities that experience. That is to say, females have a tendency towards menstruation. Males have a tendency towards, you know, more bone density and more muscle mass and facial hair and things like that. I say tendency towards because gender is, in fact, bimodal. There are some males who are have no facial hair, can't grow very good beards and are short and more feminine. And there are women who are more masculine. Those are all true. But it doesn't change the fact that they are discernibly male or female. So uh, this Twitter account says, why is Planned Parenthood now giving medical advice to children? This should be illegal. Another person said, besides all the lies and inaccuracies, talk to your trusted adult or doctor. Notice how they don't include the parent. Earlier this month, Oklahoma governor Kevin Stitt has signed a bill that effectively bans gender reassignment drugs from being prescribed to minors at the state's main children's hospital. The Republican is withholding COVID relief funds from Oklahoma Children's Hospital at OU Health until it stops providing puberty blockers and hormone therapy to under 18s. Yes, because science has shown desistance rates. The rate at which kids who claim to be trans stop being trans is extremely high. Depending on the study, it could be between 65 and 90 percent. There was a Brad Pitt's daughter, son, John, biologically female, transitions. Why didn't they give this child uh, double mastectomies? Why didn't they give this child hormones? The end result, this child is now identifying as female again and going by Shiloh. So what would have happened if they gave Shiloh a double mastectomy? There's a very horrifying story. You can read it in the post millennial. It's, it's, it's genuinely crazy. The, the doctor who posts on Instagram or on, on TikTok about yeeting the teats and saying, Titus delete us. These people are psychopaths. One woman who received a treatment from the psychotic doctor regretted it. The doctor lied. That's why I say psychotic. The doctor lied saying no one's ever regretted it, except for this one famous, this well-known detransitioner who says immediately afterwards they felt remorse. It was a huge mistake as they looked down at their scarred body. And the doctor says no one's ever felt that way. When questioned about the individual, she said, I thought it was a hoax. That's why I say psycho. If you get an email from someone, from a patient saying, please help, this was a mistake, I don't know what to do. And you say, you're hoaxing me. You are deluded. And you're not providing adequate care. Governor Sitt said, by signing this bill today, we are taking the first step to protect children from permanent gender transition surgeries and therapies. It is wildly inappropriate for taxpayer dollars to be used for condoning, promoting, and performing these types of controversial procedures on healthy children. Oklahoma Children's Hospital currently offers life-altering drugs to teenagers under 18 with parental approval. It is thought to be around, it is thought that around 100 minors are currently receiving treatment. Stitt also called for the Republican-controlled state legislature to ban some of those gender-affirming treatments statewide when it returns in February. He said in a statement that he wanted a prohibition on all irreversible gender transition surgeries and hormone therapies on minors. It comes after Alabama tried to make it a felony for doctors to prescribe puberty blockers to minors with a punishment of up to 10 years in prison. Puberty block blockers are not FDA approved. That's it. They're not. Now, I will always say this. When it comes to medical treatments, you got to talk to a doctor. Don't take advice from me. But my understanding, according to these reports, is that they're not FDA approved for this use. The, the, um, I forgot the name of the, the drug. They're, they're, they're FDA approved for specific purposes, but not for, for, for blocking puberty. Or I, I, I could be wrong. Is it Lipron? I think that's what it's called. The drug is used when a girl has like early onset puberty and it's dangerous for her. And so they want to put a pause on it at a young age. Like we're talking like seven or eight years old. So Lupron, is that what it's called? Anyway, I could be wrong. Don't take advice from me. I'm not a doctor. Talk to a doctor about it. I'm just saying my personal political opinion on the matter is that children should not be undergoing sex change operations or medication. And I have a question about why Planned Parenthood of all places is now doing this. What is the point? of? I, you know what? Maybe that's it. Giving these drugs to kids will sterilize many of them. 
Maybe that's what Planned Parenthood is, is saying. Well, you know, you get these drugs and that's planning for parenthood for the future. It means you won't be one. Unless you adopt, I suppose. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey signed a law in March that banned for physicians from providing gender affirming surgeries. I love how they say that gender affirming. Affirming as if someone who comes in and claims they want their hand cut off should be affirmed. No, we need compassion for these people. We need to find ways to protect them and make sure they live long, healthy lives. I think the surgeries they're performing on these kids is doing the opposite of that. How do we protect these people? With so many people posting these forums about how it, transition was a mistake. How do we protect them? When you have doctors saying they want to yeet the teats, yeet the teats. Look how insane this is. Why might some, why might some patients feel sad after surgery despite wanting it for so long? It's actually not uncommon. That is so insane and creepy. This woman is evil. This is an evil human. Titus deletus. These are healthy young women who are experiencing depression. Now, some may be trans. Have, I, what I mean is some may be experiencing gender dysphoria, but not all of them are. And that's why you end up with some of these higher profile stories of young women saying it was a mistake. They were just socially ostracized and depressed. Some of them were just gay. And these psychopaths perform surgeries on them. It's it's messed up. People are pushing back. So I think in the long run, this will be frowned upon in the future. But I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.